Good morning. morning. It's good to see you on this beautiful June's morning, the gorgeous day that it is. Uh Oh, I'm talking over the bell. Is that still legal? (laughs) Um, Would appreciate your prayers were for Alfred Priggy, who's at our hospital here in town. Uh, Was in the hospital. I don't know if he's still there or not. Was going to maybe get out yesterday. But please keep Alfred in your prayers. The downtown vacation Bible school starts next week. On Sunday, June the 10th, it'll be at the Crossroads Church, which is at the Old Harley Shop, and the time is from 6 to 8.30 p.m., and there are registration forms at both entrances, so please make sure you sign up for Vacation Bible School for the town, and then we're also going to do a weekend one here that is coming up July, I believe, is that correct, August, so... And uh, VBS donations are going to be given to Together We Can Make a Difference. We are collecting uh, dish soap, toilet paper, bar soaps, and shampoo, toothpaste, and toothbrushes. You can make those donations even if you don't have anyone attending Vacation Bible School. Were there any other announcements? Rita Schweinhagen, Mrs. Rita Schweinhagen would like to have a few words with you this morning. I can't remember if she said she wants to tell you how wonderful Rupert is or talk about the blood bank. It's one, one of the other. Everybody knows how wonderful he is. <laughs> Including you, Pastor. Um, as you know, the Red Cross uh, phlebotomists have been on strike for, well, over two months now. And they've only been having uh, like two blood mobiles a day in the whole region. So we've only had, in the past two and a half months, we've only had one blood mobile in Henry County. I got a call just this past week that Emmanuel has been chosen to have one of these blood mobiles. So we are very fortunate. So we can't let them down. Um, What what they're using are the supervisors who have been cross-trained um, and there were uh, a few phlebotomists who had been in training who have not joined the union yet, and so they have been working, and there, are just, uh, there have been a few that have crossed the line. So we do have enough to have a couple of blood mobiles now, every day. And we're, I think we're collecting approximately 7% of our goal, which means we have to import it from all over the United States when we need blood here. And if you've known anybody who's been in the hospital lately and has needed blood, you know how precious that is. Uh, Our blood mobile uh, will be Tuesday, June the 12th, from 12 to 6, which does not leave us a whole lot of time. Uh, Judy Huffman, excuse me, Judy Huffman is going to take charge of the food again. So, excuse me, uh, if you wish to donate some food or help her out in the kitchen, please see Judy, she's here today. Uh, we will need a couple, I have, I have one greeter. Uh, Carol Dilley has done this for several years and she does a great job. Uh, but I don't have any donor escorts, I don't have any people for the canteen, so I need people for that. Uh, We need a few good men to help load and unload. The elevator should be a lot of help this year, but we still could use a a couple people. Uh, And I know we have more men volunteers than Ron Myers. Um, I don't have the posters yet, but I should be getting them the first of the week. I will bring them to the church, and anybody who wants to pick up a poster and put it any place you want to, please do so. that includes your kids, you could do that too. Um, we will not have double reds because we only have two people that are working in double reds and they're at the donor center. So, if, and if you want to donate, you can see me after church or you could call me. My number is 592-4606. Uh, you can see Judy after church if you wish to donate food and um, I'm hoping that we have a good turnout for this blood mobile because it's one of the few that we're having in Henry County. Uh, if it was just Henry County, 
that was a strike, or even the Great Lakes region, or the, or just our region, um, it wouldn't be so bad. But Cleveland's been out on strike for over three months, and the Great Lakes region has been on strike for over two months. So uh, you can see where we really need the blood. So thank you very much. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the creator of wind and rain, field and ocean, the bread of life coming down from above, the power at work within us in this world. Amen. Before God and in the company of our sisters and brothers, let us confess our sin. God and Father of all, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. We have thought better of ourselves than others. We have told lies, said hurtful things, acted in ways we wish we could take back, and looked the other way when action was needed. In your mercy, O God, forgive us, cleanse us, and heal us. For the sake of Jesus our Savior. Amen. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. Everything has become new. In Christ you are a new creation. Your sins are taken away and you are made new. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ has forgiven you.
grace that as Christ gives to us, the love of God and the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Father, dwelling in mystery and majesty, renewing and fulfilling creation by your eternal Spirit, and revealing your glory through our Lord Jesus Christ, cleanse us from doubt and fear, enable us to worship you with your Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, living and reigning now and forever. Amen. The first lesson this morning is found in the sixth chapter of Isaiah. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me! I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed, and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here I am, send me. The word of the Lord. Be this morning we will read Psalm 29 by alternate verse, please. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is the voice of thunder. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. The voice of the Lord splits the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the old trees die, and the shirts of the forest bare. And in the temple of the Lord, all are crying glory. The Lord shall give strength to his people. The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. <clears throat> the second lesson is from the eighth chapter of Romans. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if, in fact, we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. The word of the Lord.
quoted in the third chapter. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh. What is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, Yet you do not receive the testimony. If I have told you everything, if I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The Gospel of our Lord. Will the children please come forward for the children's sermon? children's sermon time. They're waiting. The children, they came. Angela, it's okay. <coughs> I just don't feel like doing it today, right guys? Let's just kind of do other stuff. Okay. Well, Pastor, what, what? Can I, what can I do to get you to, to do the children's sermon? We I just don't want to do it. Going. I'm not going to do it, so well, quit, quit talking need, to me. They're, they're waiting. They're, I'm just they're not ready. going to do it. <laughs> well, how, would you do it if I gave you a dollar? <laughs> Okay, um, so today, today what we want to talk about is, uh, we, uh, that was 
looking very nice. Yeah, I need the dollar first. <laughs> Jesus, God tells us that he gave us Jesus because he loves us. That's why he gave us Jesus. Not because of anything we've done or not because of anything, any other reason. He said because he loves us. You know what? I think we should do the things that we do because we love him. And just doing it for money isn't a very good reason, is it? We should try to show the love of Jesus all the time. For just because he loves us, so we should love everyone else. Don't you think that's a good idea? Okay. Sounds good to me, too. So thanks a lot for this morning. Make sure you get a bulletin. And uh, make sure you come back next week. See if I get another dollar. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you guys. We'll see you next week. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father, our Lord, and our Savior Jesus Christ. There were these two very, very nasty, cruel brothers who kind of took advantage of everyone and everything in this rather small town. They were, became very successful, though, very successful business people. Now, the one brother died, and the other brother wanted a minister to perform the service. He went to this local church, and he asked the minister if he would have the service of his brother. The minister hesitated, didn't know if he really wanted to do that. But the living brother said, I'll tell you what, I'll give you a million dollars if you have this service. All you have to do is to say that my brother was a saint. The minister agreed. Didn't have to think too long about that one. So it came time for the funeral. The minister is standing up front, and he looks down at the casket, and he points to it, and he says, this man was on one of the meanest, foulest, nastiest people I have ever met in my life. He was selfish, uncaring, unloving, but compared to his brother who's sitting right in the here, he's a saint. 
<laughs> Motivation means everything, doesn't it? We all have a price, do you think? It's not only important what we do, but it's important why we do it in the faith business. I always tell the kids that in catechism class. It's not just important what you do, but why you do it. Motivation, according to Jesus, means everything. According to our faith, means everything. Unlike most of the rest of your life, motivation really isn't all that important. The fact of the matter is, if your baby is screaming and you have a headache and you're tired, you just want the baby to stop screaming. You don't really care how, why, you just want it to stop. If someone hands you a check for a million dollars, you're not going to sit and question him if he says, don't question me, just want to give this to you, take the money and run. If someone suddenly stops annoying you, who's been annoying you for a very long time, they just suddenly stop, you don't sit and question them as to why they stopped annoying you. You're just glad that they did. For most things in life, we don't care about motivations. Motivations are totally irrelevant. But guess what? They're relevant to God. John 3, 16, probably the most popular verse in the New Testament says, For God so loved the world that he gave his son. The motivation of hatred, the motivation of revenge is very, very strong, and all of us have had it at different points in our lives. Man, it gives you a lot of strength, doesn't it? When you just want some revenge, when you just have a little bit of hatred in your heart. It gives you strength. The adrenaline gets running. You feel that power. Nowhere is near the power of love, though. The most powerful force on earth and in heaven. God could have not have made the sacrifice he made for any other reason, under any other motivation. It had to be out of his love. It does not say that God thought Castello was a pathetic loser, so he gave him his son. It doesn't say that God looked at the world and wanted to vomit, so he gave it his son. It doesn't say that God, out of desperation, because he couldn't think of anything else to do, gave his son. For God so loved the world that he gave his son. I don't pass too close uh, to intersections anymore. I learned my lesson a couple of years ago when I got a ticket for passing somebody too close to an intersection and there was not a yellow line in my lane. The highway patrol officer, I told him, I said, there was no yellow line there. I said, it doesn't matter, sir. It's so within so many feet of the intersection. You know, I didn't, I didn't know that. Did you guys know that? So I said, why was there any yellow line? And he says, why? I said, why are there sometimes yellow lines and then sometimes there's not? I assumed when there wasn't a yellow line, it was okay to pass. He said, no, that's not true. And anyway, I don't pass anyone near an intersection anymore. That ticket was way too expensive. My motivation, to be honest with you, is not for safety reasons and it's not because I want to be a good citizen because I don't want to pay that fine. That's also the reason why I don't drive any faster than what I drive, not for safety not to be a good citizen. The truth of the matter is, I don't drive any faster than what I do because I don't want a ticket. And that's what motivates me. Pure and simply that. There was an uh, Italian delicatessen owner, and this guy uh, just opened his shop. There was a customer who came in, and he said, uh, uh, picked up a, some cheese. He said, is, is this Gouda cheese? And the man said, all of my cheese is a Gouda cheese. <laughs> Not all reasons for doing things are Gouda. Sometimes in confirmation classes, I'll have a kid who will miss a class and they'll come up to me. And the worst thing I, I think I can possibly hear is they say, did I miss anything? And I go, <laughs> I miss tons and tons and tons of stuff. What are you, tell, what are you saying? Of course you missed a lot of stuff. 
Nicodemus, who is in today's gospel lesson, is one of my favorite, if not my favorite, New Testament character apart from Jesus. It's Nicodemus. Fascinating character, a leader of the church, a fine, upstanding citizen. And yet he doesn't get this stuff Jesus is trying to tell him, although he wants to. He struggles with it. He struggles with it in his gospel lesson. He says, okay, now wait a minute. What you're trying to tell me is, and Jesus says, no, 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 no. Have you been a leader all this time and you still don't get it? Here's what I'm trying to say. That's why I love Nicodemus so much. And he keeps on struggling with his faith. Keeps on trying to understand when he doesn't really understand. But he wants to understand. He knows there's something there. So he struggles. Which should be us all. Festus was the procurator of Judea during the reign of Nero. Emperor Nero, he took over Pontius Pilate's role. He's the one who kept Paul in prison for two years. Festus did. Festus loved hearing the Apostle Paul talk, loved hearing him talk, but what Paul said terrified him. Didn't know what to make of it. He's terrified of Paul. Motivations and reasons. I ask myself, what are the reasons that I withhold love when I withhold it? And I do sometimes withhold love, sometimes very intentionally. Jesus says, love God, love one another, but I withhold it for different reasons. All good reasons, I tell myself. All logical reasons, I tell myself. It's not going to be appreciated. It's not going to be understood. It's going to be wasted. It's not deserved. I'm too tired. I come up with all sorts of stupid and selfish reasons for not doing it. God did not withhold his. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. I rant and rave about this occasionally, but it's the absolute truth. I do not like, in God we trust on coins and money. I do not like it. I may be one of the few religious leaders in the country who says that, is willing to take my hits because of it, but I don't like it. I'll tell you why I don't like it, though. I don't like it for religious reasons. I don't like it because it's not true. Why put a lie on there? Now, if it said, in God we should trust, or in God I will try to trust, don't you think it would be a good idea to trust in God? Then I think that'd be perfectly fine. I wouldn't be ranting and raving about it. But it says, in God we trust, and we don't. Not completely. Not totally. And we never have. Emus and kangaroos are on the seal of Australia. You know why they're there? Because they can't go backwards. Animals who cannot go backwards. They always have to go forwards. So forwards we should go. Trying to trust in God, trying to understand his love, trying to share his love. Understanding we're not doing it all the time. Understanding we don't always get it right. Some of you will know Dietrich Bonhoeffer, the Lutheran minister who was arrested during World War II. He wasn't actually, he was involved in a plot to assassinate Adolf Hitler. His story is absolutely fascinating. If you've never read anything about him, I strongly suggest it. He tried to assassinate Hitler, was involved with the group that did that. And a couple of times they had bombs, and one bomb didn't go off in a plane. But anyway, that's not why he was arrested. He was arrested because he tried to help Jews escape into Austria. He was in prison. He was finally killed shortly before the war ended. He was shot. Dietrich Bonhoeffer would talk to the gods about his, uh, the guards about his faith. And this is what he wrote. He said, I can listen all right to the guards, but sometimes I hardly find anything to say. Yet perhaps the way one asks about some things and is silent about other things really suggest what matters. So what are we silent about? What do we ask about? Those are the questions. 
I have a pastor friend of mine who's absolutely petrified of hospitals. I've always felt so sorry for the guy. He never goes into them unless a family specifically says, will you please come to the hospital, and then he'll go. He just gets so terrified of hospitals. And yet he went into the business. I went to an ice cream place, and they didn't have any ice cream. And I asked him, why in the world are you open when you don't have ice cream? He said, well, we have some pop. But no ice cream. Doesn't make much sense to me. My dad, Leo, worked on a boat in Lake Erie for quite a while, and yet he was terrified of water. He couldn't swim. Petrified of water. Gary Larson wrote one of my favorite cartoons, if, uh, well, my favorite cartoon of all time, is called The Far Side, which some of you know. People either hate The Far Side or else they love it. I love it. I heard him interviewed on a TV show once, though, and this interviewer was going, I was asking him different questions, and Gary Larson was going, yes, no, yes, no. And the interviewer said, you know, you're really not very funny. He said, no, I, I know, people expect that, but I'm not. It just comes out in his comics. He's not funny otherwise. Strange, isn't it? One of my brothers was voted the most friendly in school, in high school. Any of you voted most friendly? They still do that kind of stuff today. I was talking to my brother once he won that award, and I knew he hated most of those kids' guts. <laughs> he just smiled and nodded his head, uh-huh. <laughs> Lily McKibben, well, one of my former members, I didn't say that name. One of my former members uh, was just a wonderful lady. She really was a sweetheart. But... Uh, I used to go see her all the time, and she was just hilarious because she loved the Jerry Springer show, and yet she always wanted to tell me how much she hated it. <laughs> but I went to give her communion one time, and there she was watching the Jerry Springer show, and as she was watching it, she was saying, isn't this horrible? Isn't this disgusting? Can you believe they put this stuff on television? And watching it, I mean, that's why they put it on. So I made it a point any time I'd bring her communion, I'd always go when the Jerry Springer show was on. Sure enough, there she was, watching it. So darn cute, and always talking about how horrible it was. We are strange people, we are. There's a man who opened his lunch at work, his lunchbox, and he said, another bologna sandwich, I cannot believe it, another bologna sandwich. The next day he opened up his lunchbox, he said, oh, here it is again, I, a bologna sandwich again, bologna sandwich, bologna sandwich. Open up his lunch the next day. Oh, well, of course, what? A bologna sandwich. Here it is again, a bologna sandwich. His friend said, why don't you just ask your wife to pack something different? He said, I pack my own lunch. <laughs> kind of human nature, isn't it? There are lots of things in this life you can do without having a real passion. As a matter of fact, most things you do in this life you don't have a real passion for. I shave almost every day, and I don't have a passion for it. I take out the garbage. I don't have a passion for that. I do lawn work. I did some of it yesterday. I don't have a passion for lawn work. I go to meetings. I certainly don't have a passion for those. But in serving Jesus Christ, in following Jesus, if you do not have a passion to follow him, then it won't happen. A deep passion, a deep love, or else it will not happen. I told every once in a while the church is a business, and I kind of cringe at that a little bit. It has business aspects. But I hope and pray we're not a business. Our business is John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his son. Charlie Brown and Lucy were talking. Lucy said to Charlie Brown, and she said, you know, the trouble with you, Charlie Brown, is that you are you. Charlie Brown said, what can I do about that? Lucy said, I don't pretend to give advice. I merely point out the trouble. The trouble with all of us is that we're all of us, and yet that's also the beauty of it. 
is that we are us. What gives us our worth is in fact that cross, and only the cross. And it gives us eternal worth. Faith is really like an ocean. It's swallow enough for, it's shallow enough for a little child just to kind of wade through. It's deep enough to swallow mountains. All depends upon how far out you go. And Jesus says, have the faith of a child. And again, what he means by that does not mean you just sit there. With the faith of a child, what does a child do? Constantly ask questions. They're constantly active. They constantly want to know. Constantly willing to learn. Actually admitting when they don't know, when they're sorry. That's a child. And that's the kind of faith that Jesus says we should have. And again, more, think, more dangerous than thinking you know everything is thinking you know enough. We never know enough, especially not of the love of Jesus. So Ole borrowed Sven's car, and he was um, swerving all along the road. He was finally pulled over by an officer. The officer was going to give him a breathalyzer test, and Ole said, oh, oh, officer, I've not been drinking. And the officer said, well, you've been swerving all over the road. And Ole said, oh, I've been trying to avoid those trees. And the officer said, avoiding those trees? He said, that's the air freshener. <laughs> Hard to avoid some of that stuff. Yeah, we go swerving around. In a weak moment, God came and gave us his son. Is that what it says? It's all motivation, isn't it? All motivation in everything you do. We're like the pig and the chicken who are crossing the road and they see a sign in the restaurant that says, bacon and eggs, breakfast, $3.99. They look at each other and finally they nod yes and they walk in and sit down. Chicken asked the pig, what in the world took you so long to make up your mind? The pig said, you only had to make a contribution, but I had to make a total commitment. <laughs> and so we are asked to make today a total commitment. For God so loved the world, was his total commitment, his motivation, that he gave us his son. Is it enough to motivate us? Amen.
us make confession of our faith to the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in the one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified and consecrated. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. When the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified, he may have spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With reverence for the earth, those in need, and the whole human family, let us offer our prayers to God. Deepen the worship life of the church and send us with fervent joy to testify to what we have seen and heard in our holy assemblies. Let us pray. Raise up leaders in this and every land who will speak out on behalf of those who are poor and oppressed. Let us pray. Awaken us, awaken in us a profound commitment to care for the earth, that your glory may be revealed in lakes and rivers, mountains and valleys, plants and animals. Let us pray. Pour out your blessing on all those celebrating graduations, marriages, and other transitions during this season. Let us pray. We give thanks for all your holy ones baptized into the name of the Holy Trinity. May all born anew in the waters of grace eagerly respond to your call to serve. Let us pray. Teach us to call you Father, as we entrust to you all who are suffering in body, mind, and spirit. We include in our prayers this morning Joshua Gerken, Joshua Jenny, and Ken Ludeman, Carolyn Lammy, Al Duquette, Linda, Roma Brown, and Paul Long, Larry Zakrich, Robert Plasman. Paul Cousineau and Jeff Warner, Rudy Eikhoff, Betty Middleton, Richard Heckler, and Walter Thompson. We pray for Pat Badenhoff, Deb Gerken, Alfred Priggy, and Mar Marjorie Downs, Brent Leiter, Paul Panning, C.A., and Herman Campbell. For Brent Thompson, Ted Tittenmeyer, Marsha, J.J. Dennis, and Landon Zung. For Arlita Panning, Brennan, Sandy Bosselman, and Jamie Bosselman. For Ed Pepper, and Kelly Troyer, and Linda Hill. Bethany Wolf, Colleen Cable, Lois Weakers, and Evelyn Carlisle. We pray for JP, for Derek Morning, Don and Susan Dravis, and Alice Langenhoff, for Crystal Garcia, Lorna Bosselman, Josh Badenhoff, Louisa Bevel, and Andrew Williams. We pray for Shirley Myers Fagus, KT, Betsy Mix, and Ann Westover. For Alexa Jennings, Michael Stover, Mary Brown, John and Dorothy Harms. For Emma Myers, Pete Miller, Miranda Schenck, Ali Gray Small, Jeff Brown, and Dave and Betty Meyer. For Austin Lighthill, Jeannie Curtis, and Terry Mountcastle. For Ken Starkey, Roman Strom, Larry Ginneman, and Fred Close. Jay Bosselman, ben Bill Winsman, Pauline Downard, and Kurt Lambersight. For Gary Keeper, Robert Kagan, Lenhard Lang, and Bobby Hagen Rieger. For Josh Bellow, Norma Strayer, Linda Loss, Amy Rodenball, and Betty Bernicke. For Caden Michaelis, Alice Overhouse, Sandra Homer, and Marlene Kreider. For Tammy Porter, Pastor Don Saul, and Joe. For Ruth M. I. 
Hoff, Carol Berlin, Lucas King, Dick Brown, Sarah Lenhart, and Deb Shink, and all those we name now in our hearts. Pray, Heavenly Father, for those in our congregational family who will be celebrating their birthdays in this coming week. Those people include Jim Hirschberger, Kurt Landersight, Jack Robbins, Alfred Ruitz, Keith Ziegler, Julie Mountcastle, Leah Rickenberg, Pat Moorball, Terry Lacey, Jordan Henry, Robert Hoffman, Zachary Elker, Gretchen Van Dyke, Joshua Jenny, and Anthony Jones. We pray on their anniversary for Tom and Wendy Schrader. We also pray, Lord God, for those serving military service from this our congregation in this our country, including Mike Dimache, Elizabeth Yoder, Tyler Hayes, and Austin Olber. Be with them all and bless them and keep them in your heavenly grace. Receive our hopes and prayers, O God of mercy, for great is your faithfulness in Christ Jesus our Lord. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Let's share the peace.
meal, and you open your hand in blessing. Fill us with good things at your table, that we may come to the help of all in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and Lord. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ took bread, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. You are all welcome to our Lord's table. Please be seated.
motion please arise. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. your servants into all the land that we may act wisely, seek the good of our neighbor, and call others to come to the feast, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Live in love as Christ loved us. And thanks be to God.